In all the examples you have seen so far, we use a single column to uniquely identify the rows in a given table. For example, in the customer's table, we have this customer ID column, which uniquely identifies the rows in this table. But there are times that we cannot use a single column to uniquely identify records in a given table. For example, look at the order items table. In this table, we have columns like order ID, product ID, and so on. Now, if you look at the data, you can see that the values in the order ID column are repeated. They're duplicated. We have 2, 2, 2, 6, 6, and so on. So we cannot use this column on its own to uniquely identify each record. The same is true for the product ID. The values in this column are also duplicated. So in this table, we use the combination of the values in both these columns to uniquely identify each order item. As an example, in this order, we have three items for products one, four, and six. And for each product, we have the quantity and unit price. So if we use the combination of the values in both these columns, we can uniquely identify each order item. In other words, we don't have two records for order ID two and product ID one. We only have a single record for that item, right? Now let's open this table in the design mode. So over here, click on this middle icon that looks like a tool. Note that this yellow key that represents the primary key exists on both these columns. This is what we call a composite primary key. A composite primary key contains more than one column. Now, why does this matter? Well, when you have a table with a composite primary key, you need to learn how to join that table with other tables. For example, here we have this table order item notes that we use to keep notes for each order item. Let's take a look at the data here. So we have this column note ID, which uniquely identifies the records in this table. Next to that, we have order ID and product ID. You learn that the combination of these two columns uniquely represent an order item. So here for order number two, for product number one, we have two notes. Now let me show you how to join this table with the order items table. So back to our query, you can see that I have already selected the SQL store database. So I'm not going to type out a use statement. All right, let's select everything from the order items table. Give it an alias. Now we need to join this with order item notes. Also, we give it an alias. How are we going to join these tables? Based on two columns. Back to the order items table. These are the columns that we need to use in our join condition. So in the order items table, we have this order ID column. This should be equal to the same column in order item notes table. So OIN dot order ID. But this is not enough. We should also join these tables based on the product ID column. So we type out and, and then we type out our second condition. So order items dot product ID should be equal to order item notes dot product ID. This is what we call a compound join condition. So we have multiple conditions to join these two tables. 